David, we've been talking a lot today about big tech and AI, a couple of notes thrown around today, including over at City, basically saying that the tech trade and particularly the AI trade might be running out of steam. And at least for right now, it might be time to take profits. You buy that? Well, I very much do. Of course, it's not a space that we own to begin with because it's outside of our mandate risk profile. I don't believe in this valuation to begin with. But if I were in the trade, I'd very much be wanting to, to peel it back. And I'm sort of impressed at City saying that because there's a lot more risk for these sell-side analysts in being early than there is in being late. I'm very accustomed to them coming out saying, hey, it's time to take money off the table after it's dropped 20%. So to do it before it drops 20 is a reasonably courageous just call from city it's kind of courageous but when you consider how far we've come at least if you go back off those october lows of last year and the idea that a lot of the criticism when that rally first started was that people were looking too far into the future for these valuations and now you have people kind of trying to do it again saying 2024 is over we're already pricing in 2025 and it raises the questions about comps for example which are going to look incredibly crazy particularly if we don't see this ai boom continue but a lot of other metrics as well that i think are going to call into question whether those valuations were appropriate. Oh, I very much agree. And I would also say the AI boom continuing implies that the AI boom gets past the backbone of AI, gets past the infrastructure. Hmm. All the money being made in AI is in the kitchen. No money is being made in the dining room. This is very, very similar to the late 90s, where you did not really have websites necessarily delivering profits, but there were these huge run-ups in the Cisco's, the networking, the equipment, the hardware where a lot of the, again, the backbone of it. I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think the margins are going to hold. I don't think the revenue projections, but they keep having good quarters. And yeah. so it is what it is. I wouldn't time it, but they will end up having a disappointing quarter. And I can't even imagine what will happen then. But David, you know, this is kind of what uh, Gargi was also talking about, that AI broadening trade. That it's not just going to be the chip guys, but she likes energy and she likes power, which is kind of your, your point. Like it's the guts, the stuff, how you make it in the kitchen. What do you think about that? I think that's the only point of AI is that eventually someone has to use it to drive efficiencies and productivity in their business. And nobody talks about AI as companies that are using it to do some part of their business better. The reason we don't want to talk about it is it's harder to measure. Mm -hmm. It isn't as clear that there will end up being the efficacy people believe in. And years later, even the Internet, it changed everybody's life. It changed so much of corporate America. But there are four or five companies yeah. that were dot-coms in the 90s that ended up making a lot of money. There weren't hundreds and thousands. The main use is day-to-day -day people using it. I'm not sure AI holds the same promise in that regard, but it doesn't really matter. It's not instantly monetizable. Right. People are looking for big 20% monthly gains right now. It's fantasy land. Yeah, and that's uh, what Bank of America was saying about hyperscalers. They're spending the money, but you got to monetize it. And therein lies the risk. But I, what, what Gargi was really focusing on was power, like the power side of it. You need power for the data centers, for AI, are utilities a good trade for you? Are they a growth area for you right now? We own American Electric Power, which is up double digits on the year. Utilities were the worst performing sector last year. AEP has the dividend and the dividend growth we believe in. And yes, we think they can benefit from greater use. I don't think there's a ton of utility companies you want to go in there because the ones that then are more levered to that space, they do take on a little riskier financial metrics. So what does that leave us then, David? I mean, as we kind of look forward to whatever sort of a rejiggering of portfolios folks are going to have to do one way or another, given some of the gains, this idea here that, you know, you have to still be invested, or at least for a lot of investor uh, managers out there, they have to remain invested here. Where does that leave them? Well, I heartily recommend this thing called dividend growth, which, of course, is what we do in, in our business. But I'm not talking my book. I'm talking about an investment strategy that was very similar to what you led off the segment with, that focus. I believe it was someone from BlackRock talking about quality, talking about cash flow, talking about better debt metrics, more reasonable valuations. This migration to quality is coming. It's just a matter of when. When it does, I think good names in healthcare, good names in consumer staples, these are the types of names are going to do well. One of the reasons we've done so well without owning any of the NVIDIAs this year is because of financials. You look at JP Morgan up over 20%, Apollo up nearly 30%. There's asset managers and banks doing quite well. There's a quality at some of the lower valuation worth looking at. All right, David. Always great stuff out of you. David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer over at the Bonson Group, helping us count you down to those closing bells.